Limpopo recorded the lowest metric pass rate among the nine provinces with just 66.7% for 2021. The province has for the first time in five years not recorded schools with a 0% pass rate. Now most of the learners with distinctions are also from the province. Joining me now is Limpopo MEC for Education, that's Poli Bushielo, as well as Acting DA Spokesperson for Educational Matters, that's Risham Maharaj. Thank you both for joining us on the program this afternoon. MEC, I'll start with you. Now, the province's matric pass rate declined by 1.5% from 2020, uh, the matric class there. Uh, firstly, what do you make of the performance of the class of Limpopo at 2021? Uh, unfortunately, uh, in 2021, the enrollment or the learners who wrote increased dramatically from around 78,000 to 142,000. So, but if you look at the actual number of learners that have uh, uh, passed in Limpopo, uh, it's a greater number. It's just that when you deal with a percentage, it gives you a very uh, different uh, picture. Uh, just to give an example, the learners who wrote in Free State is about 38,000. Right. And the ones that wrote in um, Pumalanga is 69,000, Northwest 42,000, Northern Cape 12,000. Uh, so you can see that they are even less than those who have passed in Limpopo. So the issue of uh, comparing uh, in terms of the percentage, mm. unfortunately, it does not give a good picture, but we have done very well. And we have seen even the minister acknowledging the, the Limpopo province for contributing uh, bachelors uh, among the five in the country. Now, Risham, let's uh, get you in here. The MEC describes the performance, uh, while she raises a bit of concern, uh, also acknowledging the fact that uh, the class of 2021 didn't do as well as expected. But you use a more extreme terminology here, having said that the performance of the class of 2021 has been almost shambolic, uh, being the only province that failed to reach uh, the 70% pass rate. Uh, what do you make of this performance? Well, thank you very much, Nchanta. <clears throat> I think, you know, figures talk for themselves. And as much as the MEC alludes to the numbers of individuals that have written a trick mm. in the various provinces, we know that the standard has always been to look at the percentage versus the numbers. Uh, that has always been the medium that ha uh, results have been measured by, and it's the, the standard that has been accepted by the department. You know, we we are also quite concerned that the MEC fee, you know, appears to be unfazed by by, by the results. 66.7 percent, you know, is the lowest from all the provinces in terms of the achievement of check results. Not even 70 percent of that. In addition to that, 1.5 percent decline from 2020 results uh, is an embarrassment. Hmm. You know, further to this, if you look at the province, the the six worst performing districts in the country are from Lipopo, and 137 schools had failed to achieve a pass rate of 40 percent. Now, this is embarrassing, you know, considering that you want to say that the best performing district in Limpopo, right. which was Capricorn South, was only ranked 51st nationally. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how we can be celebrating this kind of results when the stats for themselves show us that there's serious concerns with the results in the purple. Now, Risham, you are also calling for action and saying that uh, Premier Stan Matabata must sack the MEC for education in the province. Uh, just uh, elaborate on this. Well, we are basically saying that the, uh, the Premier Stan Matabata has made pronouncements. He has basically uh, taken the province into his confidence and he's advised the province that he helped you know, will be holding his MECs to account that there are clear uh, key deliverable areas that they must be delivered on. And all we are asking is for the Premier to now uh, take action on the words that he has spoken to basically uh, hold his MECs to account and uh, to ensure that uh, they are, there is action that is being taken against these results, which are dismal. It, it, it's poor. MEC Bushello, you've heard uh, Risham there describing the performance as dismal, also calling for the Premier to act and uh, fire you. Uh, what do you make, and have you taken note of this call by the DA? 
Yes, they have the right to say that, and the Premier have the right to respond to that one. Mm. Uh, I think they've been doing that for, for a long time. Uh, I think the Premier will be able to respond. But let's talk to facts. Yeah. Uh, when I came here, I came in 2019, and the results uh, went up. We were last year, uh, we were at uh, number seven, if you remember. Mm. Uh, it just that we were uh, badly affected by COVID because the government that make, uh, that uh, Honorable Maharaj belongs to did not develop the rural areas. And you will agree with me that quintal one, two, three schools, that is poor schools, are located in Limpopo. Everybody knows that fact. But what he fails to acknowledge is that even poor as they are, they are not poor in the mind. They have tried their best. They have tried to compete with the best, like Gauteng and Western Cape, when they did not have even online services, uh, mm. they have to sit at home from March 18 to 31 August, but they were able to make it. But because it is not in their interest, uh, they will not say it. They are talking about Capricorn South. Yes, because that's where mostly uh, uh, it's an urban area, Polokwane area, where most of their children goes in. So it is still a racial issue that is coming in here that as long as you are black, you will perform a uh, bad. So I'm not going to be deterred by that. Uh, since I came here, they know that there's been some development. We don't have uh, zero sc uh, uh, schools in, in the province. Uh, we have some developments that were coming. We're introducing e-learning in grade one and grade eight. And also, Honorable Maharaj, sit in the legislature, sit in the portfolio committee. We give them reports. They know the budgets that they give us. They know the budgets that have to be cut in order for us to save life in terms of COVID-19. And they understand, they've been going around, they know all the challenges uh, that we're facing. They know we are not sleeping, especially in quintal one, uh, one and three. So we come here instead of celebrating with our learners that under difficult circumstances, they were able to make it. We come here and, and you know, call them derogatory names and all other things. I don't really appreciate that. I think mm. it's just unfair. Our, our learners under difficult conditions tried. Now, MEC, I want to expand on the point that you make about this uh, worrying trend of 0% schools. Uh, they've been a constant feature in the province's national senior certificate results in the past four to five years. But for the first time in five years, the province didn't have any schools with a 0% pass rate. You've described this as a step in the right direction. Yes. Yes, we were able, able to diagnose what the issue was. Those schools that were getting uh, 0%, uh, they didn't have enough learners to qualify for, ed for educators to teach them all the subjects. As a result, one teacher or two teachers were forced to, to, give, uh, to render them uh, services, of which some of the teachers did not know uh, the subject. So we then uh, matched the school to the nearest one, and they were able to, and we also helped with enrichment and extra classes. That's why we don't have zero. Uh, uh, schools and will continue to do that so that we don't have to go back. But I must say that if COVID was not here, and also in terms of the progress level, for sure you have seen the report, yeah. Limpopo will be at 72.4%. Now, Risham, I also want to get your view regarding, uh, well, the step in the right di direction, as the MEC calls it. What has been your assessment in this regard? Well, thank you very much. Firstly, let, let, let's get back to, you know, the issues on hand. And I think the MEC wants to digress and wants to move the issues on hand and make it racialized. Here's the facts. The facts is South Africa has been facing COVID. All the provinces have been facing the issue of COVID. And the irony of the, the argument of the MEC is that Limpopo province was not the hardest hit in terms of COVID. So, you know, we can't use COVID as an excuse. Yes, it has an impact. Mm. It's had an impact in all provinces, but it should not be the excuse as to why Limpopo province has, uh, has fared so, so poorly. Now, you know, we have some recommendations on, a, on what we believe are the issues in this province. Mm. And, you know, one of the issues that we have identified is that your fee paying learners uh, have achieved a, a much higher bachelor passes as opposed to the non-fee paying schools. And what we are saying is, and this goes back to what the MEC was alluding 
in terms of the budgets is we we are saying that your planning your strategy should have been then to allocate more funding to those schools so we are saying that they must ensure that the funding model for no fee schools needs to be revisited and an increase in funds is needed to ensure improved performance we also say that there has to be more support for districts in the province to improve the monitoring and evaluation of the circuit and district offices throughout the year it cannot mm. only happen close to 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 the examinations Rishama, we also say so no go ahead sorry we also saying that you know more support must be given to the progress learners to ensure that we better prepare them for the exams now Rishama, i want to uh, also challenge you a bit on this uh, discrepancy that you raised. You've raised concern by the large discrepancy in performance between learners in uh, paying schools and no fee schools. Uh, this is an 89.1 percent of, of, of fee schools who actually uh, passed. Uh, please explain on this uh, on this aspect for us. Well clearly you know I think it's it's got to do with resources. The fact that schools are paying and that once they have those funds they are able to utilize the funds in a more efficient manner as opposed to no fee paying schools and this is where i say that planning from the department should have been there to say how do we now support the non fee paying schools how do we channel funding uh the limited funding and yes the budgets have been cut but the budgets have you know with the with the reduction in budgets how do we best utilize these resources especially for schools that are unable to provide the resources and to ensure equitable education let me see, Bushello, I will give you the last bite. In 2020, the province's metric pass rate uh, was 68.2%, which placed it seventh among nine provinces. Uh, talk us through the impact of COVID-19 and the effect that it had on learning. We touched a bit uh, with Risham on this matter. Yeah, but also let me just make a small comment on what uh, Hisham is saying about the no fee and fee paying. Yeah. I mean, in Limpopo, there is a lot of unemployment and also especially in the rural areas. That is why quintile one, two, three, the no fee school that is talking about, they are mainly in Limpopo. And that's why we even provide feeding. That's why we even provide scholar transport. Mm. For him to be disingenuous and say that those who pay fees must then be supported more, they are, they, they are uh, 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 producing more. It's because yes, they are in, in, in urban areas where they, 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 their parents are able to pay, to, to pay more. Uh, for those who are not able to pay more. That's mm. why we should concentrate more and give support. So you cannot be saying at this era that there is no need for redress. I don't agree. Yeah. I think we need to redress and we will do that without even apologizing. So when it comes to the, in terms of the result, I think as the, as the province, uh, we were able to work together and make sure that we give our learner support. But one of the things is that uh, now, like I said, in, in uh, last year, there were about uh, 79 learners and 79,000 uh, metric, metropolitans who were writing, and it was a little bit better. But this mm. year, they increased to 142, and the budget did not increase. But we don't complain because we know that they are used for COVID in order to save lives. So we tried our best yep. with our teachers under difficult circumstances to make sure that they, they, they pass. That's Polly Bushielo. She's the MEC for Education in Limpopo. We also heard from the DA there. They were represented by Risham Maharaj, who's the acting DA Limpopo spokesperson for educational matters.